to make fly containers for egg pulses. One can use these types of dish uh, containers that you can get from Supply House. This is a 100 mils. This one is a liter. And what you can do is to cut off the edges off of this if you like. And same on this one, or just leave this one the way it is. Um, and then you can make a hole in the back side like that. And you can do the same with this one, which will end up like that. It's easiest to use a soldering iron to melt the plastic um, than trying to cut it with a scalpel because it usually will break or crack. Then once you have these like this um, in a hole made in these, then one can use um, cotton or, or something to cover this. So what we've done here is to make a hole in this one and a cotton plug can fit in there. You have to get the jumbo cotton to make that work. Um, all right. And then what you can do is with these, one can actually put dishes on top that will collect the eggs. Now you can see that this dish is just barely covering the edges here. And you have to be careful because any gap will allow the flies to come out. And so one has to be careful. This is the lid of a Petri dish. If you happen to use the bottom part of this particular Petri dish, it looks like it's going to fit in, but then there's a tiny gap right here. The flies will come out. And so you have to be careful about which Petri dish and ones you use. You can use smaller Petri dishes like these Falcon Petri dishes. These are 50 times 90 millimeters, but I find these to be a problem because if you open this up and use the bottom, sometimes they have these little clips that don't allow it to go in. And then if it is in, it's too difficult to get out to change between egg pulses. The lids fit really nice, but then again, sometimes they stick and you can't, and it's not very thick for the auger. So those are a problem. I think these other Petri dishes, um, the lids can work relatively well on there. You just have to be really careful about getting the right connection when you make them. Okay, um, so that's for this. And if you want to use this type of container, which was one of these, it's really relatively easy um, because then you can take your your auger dish, which I make ahead of time and put in the refrigerator so the auger is ready to go. And I put saran wrap or something around the edge. And now I have an auger dish, which then one can take a little bit of yeast, baker's yeast, drop that on there just a tiny bit. That will encourage the flies to lay eggs. And if you want to keep your adult flies alive, you take a little bit of that cornmeal that you've made up the food, standard food, and put that in there, kind of pack it in so it won't fall out. Pack it down hard, it won't fall out. And now you can put that on top of this, and you can see it's gonna fit really nice because I didn't cut too big of a hole. And then you take the tape, and on the tape, if you dog ear the end of the tape, then it's easier to have a little tab to pick up. So I dog-eared all of these. And now, when I want to change it, I can take this, shake down my flies gently, not to get all the food to drop off, take these little dog ears and pull those off relatively easy, shake it down, switch out the plates, and put another plate on. So that makes it really easy. The top part of this, I just took some nylon and you know cut off the edges off of here, put the nylon around and then just put some black electrical tape around there. One can use a nylon stocking, for example, or some uh, mesh if you find some really tight mesh. Okay, so that's how to make fly chambers. Um, 
and then you can put your flies in there. These bigger ones are kind of nice because it's easier to push the flies away from the dish when you're changing it. The smaller ones are a little bit problematic because you don't have as much room to move the flies away when you change the dish and they're more likely to escape. Okay. One can also use the fly bottles that come with flies, uh, fly suppliers, and this is not a bad idea either. Uh, you can make a little hole at the top and put your cotton in there to keep you know air going around. And then one can use these dishes and just gently put it on there, but you gotta make sure the food's in the middle. And then um, one can tape those as well, you know, with the dog ear tape. And do that on all the all the sides, all the way around. The problem is it's pushing on the auger a little bit, and the auger, if you push down too hard, the auger will get stuck in there. Um, you might think, oh, well, I'll make the dish on the top and put the cotton plug in here. The problem is many of the plastic bottles have this kind of weird deformation in the bottom, so it's hard to get a, a, a little dish on top of those. They do make these smaller dishes, Petri dishes, that will fit pretty close into there. But you see like this one, it just fits in its heart. It's hard to get it out when you want to change it out. You might be able to use the, the lid of those dishes, um, but they're pretty small and you don't have much space for putting the apple juice auger in there. So those are different ways to make the, the dishes and the auger, apple juice auger in here and food will keep the flies alive between egg pulses. So I prefer this, this approach here and it works pretty well. And just have to make sure that the tape is tight because if there's any gap, the flies will get out. And then you set that to the side, mark your flies and you can let that sit for the day or two days. It's also easy to add water through the lid onto the food if it's drying out. You can just squirt water right through there and water your food if it seems to be drying out. So every day for three days, I change out this with the new one, toss the old ones, and then on the third day, change this out, collect eggs for four hours, and then put a new dish on. You can collect another batch for four hours. And now you have a very tight egg pulse um, for the larvae to develop. And then once you have that, then one will, depending on your collection, so there might be some flies that stick, stick to it as well, then if you want first instars, wait 24 hours, and then you'll have uh, first instars coming off the eggs. If you want to wait and get seconds, then two days, and you'll have um, second instars. So that's another approach. To collect the eggs and not allow them to dry out or die of CO2, if you just put the lid back on, and you put that on like that, even though there's a tiny gap, it tends to kill the flies, the larvae, the embryos, because the CO2 builds up. So what we do is we take these lids, cut a hole in it with a soldering iron, and then we glue the netting. You can see the glue here. Now the netting allows air to go through. We put the lid on like that. And if you're gonna let them go for two or three days, you might actually even put parafilm or saran wrap around the edge. And it does keep the moisture in there from them drying out. Again, if it gets a little bit too dry, you can add water right through the screen. So this is one way then to then mark the, put some tape on here and then mark the time you collected them. And now you'll have your egg pulses at a certain stage. So this is one way to utilize and collect eggs and then get your first instars off. Usually they might be under the food, so just moving the food around, then you can pick them off relatively easily. 
Another way to do egg pulses is to use the lid of these dishes. And these dishes are the ones that are five and a half millimeter um, diameter dishes. The lids are going to be a little wider. Um, there's quite a variety of these different types. So you don't want the real thin, the real small ones. Um, the bigger ones are, are a bit better. You can take the normal fly vials. You can cut them off or leave them the way they are if you want to. Um, if you cut it off here, they tend to crack. So again, a soldering iron helps to get rid of the one end, uh, just the soldering iron and then melt it off and then take it off. And when you have that, it kind of leaves this little thing like this. And then what we do is we make a hole that's smaller than the hole of this. And you can then put that on like that and then glue it with epoxy glue. Now you have an epoxy glued um, vial that's on there. What's easy to do with this now is to take cotton, put cotton in here, and you can collect your egg pulse relatively easy this way. But do remember, if you're going to put adults in here, they will come up and come out of this little dish. So you really need to put saran wrap or parafilm around the edge so the adults cannot get out. So if you want to do an egg pulse like this, this is one way. You just have to shake the adults down so they'll be in here. Have this ready to go and have another container ready with the food. So you'll have one with auger and food ready. And then you shake them down like that and you quickly switch it over to the other one and then rewrap it around. And now you'll have everything easily contained in here. If you leave a longer uh, container, it's easier to keep the flies away from uh, the opening when you change it out. Okay, so these are the ways to collect eggs and then store the eggs or the larvae for whatever time you want and then um, take them and put them in the different aisles of food. If we're going to store the the eggs and the larvae for a days and say we only want third instars what we tend to do because the auger and the food will dry out you can keep adding fluid and water to it but i tend to take a very larger petri dish like this one these bigger ones put paper inside and then add water to this And now we have a wet paper towel and moisture. And then if you put this inside of that and then put the lid, not where it's tight, because that'll build up the CO2, but where you have a crack like that, now you can place that and maybe, um, you know, like something like that. So the CO2 can get out, but then you'll have uh, the larvae and them that they'll stay moist it depends on how dry your room is, for example, but we tend to find that this works pretty well to keep the food and the auger from drying out. Just don't close the lid fully because the CO2 will build up and kill the larvae. Okay, so hopefully that will do the trick.